Um, yeah, so I'm Nate. Um, I'm representing Aragon Labs today, and yeah, I, my talk is going to be somewhat less concrete, actually, um, but I think we'll dovetail very nicely with the past two talks. Okay, so Aragon Labs. Um, so Aragon Labs is part of the Aragon network, um, but we're actually a separate company that's sort of part of that network. Um, so we're responsible for Vogdani. Um, Vogdani is a censorship resistant, universally verifiable, and anonymous online voting um, and digital governance platform. Um, and what's interesting is that it's, it's really focused not on the crypto space, but on the traditional organization space. So our use cases right now are cooperatives and community organizations and even companies. Um, but we share technology that's used in, the, in Aragon's DAO stack. Um, so um, to start off with DAOs, obviously um, there's people from Klima DAO, there, there's DAO projects here today. Um, but more generally, just to go over some big ideas of how DAOs can interact with climate. Um, so one idea is rather than having DAOs have to themselves be specifically climate focused, um, we're looking into whether we could build a carbon offset into our framework itself. So when you're creating a DAO, you can get an estimate of how much carbon creating that DAO will produce or how much carbon a specific um, voting process will, will produce. Um, and, and you can actually offset that when you're building a DAO. Um, again, this is like a big idea, not something that's actually concretely implemented yet. Um, another thing, layer two governance. Um, so obviously, it's a lot cheaper to vote off of Ethereum, but it also is um, likely a lot more efficient to vote off of Ethereum. Um, so Aragon recently deployed our DAO stack on Polygon, so you can have a DAO and, and do governance on Polygon. Um, in addition, uh, Vogdani has a has an off-chain um, or a layer two voting blockchain, um, and we're looking right now into being able to have governance processes that take place fully off-chain and then bridge those back onto Ethereum um, with all of the same security standards and everything. Um, so this is a way to have governance that's much cheaper but also much more energy efficient um, than governance right now can be on Ethereum. Um, okay, and then um, third, in terms of DAOs, so not all credits are equal. Um, as we've seen, like, there's, there's different governance mechanisms to figure out which carbon credits are going to be used um, or tokenized or whatever. So um, you can use a DAO to, um, to have decentralized and, and weighted governance even over which climate projects to support. Um, you could even use um, a wrapped Bitcoin or a tokenized um, carbon offset as a governance token itself and permissionlessly create voting processes uh, with that token. Um, so moving uh, away from DAOs for a moment and getting to be more general, um, I'd actually make the case that in addition to technology and, and economical solutions, um, I think governance is really core to the problem of climate change. Um, and, and that's the case that I'm going to make. Um, so to, to start with, there's this, um, I pulled this from The Guardian. Two thirds of people around the world said that climate change is a global emergency. Um, so obviously, despite that, w we haven't done enough so far. And our nation states, um, as has been mentioned, are, are not doing enough by themselves um, to offset climate change. Um, why might this be? Well, one idea is, comes from this study from Pew Research Center. Um, which notes that only 44% of people globally are satisfied with democracy. Um, and even less than that, just 32% um, believe that their elected officials care what people like them think. Um, on the other hand, though, voting, um, two-thirds of people believe that voting um, gives them some sort of say over how the government runs, runs things. So two-thirds of people think that climate change is a global emergency, two-thirds of people think that they do and should have some say over their government, um, but most people don't, don't believe that democracy actually represents them well. Um, so this is, this is where I make the case that um, governance might actually be core to um, what's going on here. Um, to extend beyond that um, further for a moment, 
Um, we have a situation where the, the wealthiest 10% in our world are producing more than half of the carbon that's being pumped into the environment. Um, but the poorest people and the poorest communities um, at every level are the ones who are facing the brunt of the crisis. Um, so to, ex to extend the idea of governance for a moment, um, I also want to introduce the idea of, of who the stakeholders are. And I think that um, there's an interesting question of um, how can we use governance um, and, and make governance easier and easier and more frictionless um, to increase who are stakeholders in our decision making um, around climate and around everything else um, can be. Um, so yeah, I, a, a small thesis I, I would have is that new types of governance are needed in order to improve environmental standards and to lessen the effects of climate change. Um, now for a couple examples of what that governance could look like in addition to the wonderful examples that have been presented here today. Um, so ESG, environmental social governance, um, is important. Um, it's basically a way for companies or shareholders or boards to show that, they, um, that they're doing good things um, with the way they run their company or where they invest their money. Um, a problem with ESG, though, is that it's been very hard to standardize. So obviously, if, if I'm a shareholder and I can write my own ESG standards, then those checkboxes are somewhat easy to check off for myself. Um, so what if we used governance um, what if we used a digital governance system to expand our idea of who the stakeholders of ESG are um, beyond just the shareholders of a company or those involved in the company? What if the definition of ESG um, had more to do with involving representatives from a company as well as governments and um, the people most affected by climate change and community organizations and so on? Um, another example of uh, a unique way that governance could be used in this space, um, so Aragon has a integration with the UMA protocol which allows for KPI or key performance indicators um, options on the blockchain. So traditionally in a more like DAO or a business space, what this means is you can have a certain collateral that's posted to a, to a contract um, and then if a group of developers or whoever um, achieves a certain um, performance, so maybe they develop something or they get to a certain threshold, um, th uh, these funds will automatically be dispersed to those people. So you can imagine a government actually could use something like a KPI options protocol. Um, they could post a collateral and they could say, okay, this is how much we think um, a carbon offset is worth and whoever you are, whether you're a company or a DAO or just a group of people, if you can offset that carbon, um, then the option will automatically be transferred to you. And if, if nobody fulfills that, then the government gets their funds back and nobody is for the worse. Um, to expand even further for a moment though, because um, governance really, I believe, is a global issue in the climate space um, that goes much beyond finance and, and DAOs and crypto and all of that. Um, so I believe that the, the past decade, we've really seen an increase in governance conflicts and political conflicts related to climate change. So um, one image that comes to mind, obviously, is the Standing Rock protests. Um, there's also been protests over um, water privatization all over the world by companies like Nestle and Coca-Cola. There's been um, movements to divest university endowments from fossil fuels and invest in renewables. Um, so, so the question really is how can we imagine governance working better in these types of situations? A lot of times they become deadlocked um, and, and don't proceed in a way that's positive for anybody. Um, well, I, I don't have that simplistic of an idea around this. I, I don't think that just giving a local community complete autonomy in every situation um, will necessarily lead to good climate outcomes. Um, but I think the different models of governance are clearly needed, and that's the point I'm trying to get across. Um, so whether um, you use different models of voting, um, such as ranked choice or quadratic or weighted voting or reimagining who the stakeholders are in, in a governance process, um, I think we're at a starting point where we need to start digging more into both within the crypto world and the climate world and in the broader political world um, how we think about governance in those senses. Um, so, 
The caveat here is that governance is not a problem that can be solved with technology. Governance is a social problem and a, a human problem, but technology can be really useful in addressing this problem. So properties like universal verifiability and censorship resistance, um, these are properties that can give local communities or those most affected by an issue or those who care most about an issue um, a better way to express their collective will, especially if they're under threat of censorship um, or, or under threat of fraud. Um, alternative models, like I mentioned, so other voting models have received a lot of attention recently um, as ways of increasing um, stakeholder participation and increasing, um, rewarding those who care most about issues rather than, than just rewarding who happens to show up. Um, and finally, um, I think switching from a high cost and, and low frequency model to a low cost and high ease of use model of governance um, through things like digital governance, um, this can actually increase turnout incredibly and increase who, again, who we involve as stakeholders um, and make it much easier to make decisions collectively um, at, a, at a granular level. So wrapping up, key takeaways. DAO technology can increase um, the use of on-chain carbon credits and make governance more energy efficient. Digital governance can be used in creative ways to improve environmental standards. And then zooming out to governance as a whole, um, increased stakeholder participation tends to lead to better governance, and in turn, better governance leads to better outcomes. Um, and this is true in the world in general and for climate specifically. Um, so, yeah, that's it. <laughs>